America helped Russian oligarchs steal Down billions. Minds in the wake of Putin's invasion of Ukraine. You've probably heard about the insane amounts of hidden wealth they have. Oligarchs buy mansions and condos in Florida, apartments in New York, yachts, even sports teams. That's who the Russian leadership are. They have a lot of money, even though it's hidden away. Gaga is set to perform on a Russian business tycoon's billion-dollar yacht, cashing in a paycheck of nearly $3 million. And you might have heard that the American government is taking action. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders, who built billions of dollars off this violent regime. We're coming for you, ill-begotten gains. But if America is really going to rein in the power of Russian oligarchy, we need to reckon with the fact that we created the system that allows them to hide their stolen wealth. That's right. America let Russian billionaires exploit our financial system through lax rules and hidden loopholes, and they're not the only ones doing it. American and European billionaires stash their riches exactly the same way. We have an opportunity right now to shut down this shadowy world of offshore finance. It's not just a way to pressure Putin's Russia, it's also a way to make sure oligarchs from around the world have less control of our economy and politics. Here's how we can do it. This is the classroom for a more perfect union. What is an oligarch anyway? Well. An oligarchy is basically a small group of wealthy elites who control the politics and laws of a nation's government. The word is almost always used by Western media to refer to Russian oligarchy. These are a small set of ultra-wealthy business magnates who have had tremendous power in Russia. Of course, we don't have that in the United States. Not us. Never us. Never that. We would never do that. We would never have oligarchs. Don't be crazy now. Don't be crazy now. Russia over the last few decades. After the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Soviet Union, most of the Russian economy was transferred from government control to private ownership in a process referred to as shock therapy. Encouraged by Western economists like Larry Summers, industries that had previously been state-run were handed over at bargain prices to the Kremlin's cronies. In the absence of any government oversight or competition, these new capitalists quickly became billionaire elites with vast control of the economy and government, otherwise known as an oligarchy. When Russia entered the world of global capitalism in 1991, the men who became oligarchs were pleased to discover a shadow financial system, flush with dark money and shielded from the law. It's a complicated and secretive network of tax havens and shell companies. We've seen in recent leaks like the Panama Papers that this shadow system has enabled the global financial elite to shield trillions of dollars from taxation or law enforcement. This system allows rich people, criminals, and crooked public officials around the world to hide money for tax evasion, money laundering, and corruption of all kinds. But here's the thing, it was European and American bankers, lawyers, and lobbyists that built this corrupt system in the first place. Russian oligarchs hide their wealth in the shadows, and we were the ones what? that turned off the lights in the first place. Here are some of the ways they exploited our rules. Russian billionaires used shell companies to hide their ownership and avoid a tax bill. Oligarchs set up shell companies in places like Delaware and Bermuda, notorious tax havens. They take advantage of American and European laws which allow corporate owners to set up companies with virtually no disclosure requirements. In fact, Slimy more than half of Russian billionaires' wealth you. is stored abroad. Oligarchs purchase high-rise apartments in Manhattan and London to launder their money. Billions of dollars of dirty money pouring into places like London and New York has contributed to making homes unaffordable for working people and turned housing, which should be a human right, into an accounting unit for Kremlin money launderers. That's why you may have noticed in the news that the mega yachts being seized in the last few weeks were located in places like Barcelona, the French Riviera, and the Maldives. These yachts Remember those papers and all we could talk about is how much you make? Yeah, because Twitch people are fucking brain rotted, dude. No one gives a shit. Trying to fucking target, like, the mega wealthy who completely control the planet. 
uh, is, is it'll make you feel powerless. Okay. But Twitch streamer, Twitch streamer, rich, that's, that's a good one. Dots are grotesque displays of the oligarchs. Oh, yes, yeah, buying a $42 million apartment contributes to homelessness. Wait, what? You think Russian oligarchs or just oligarchs in general do not contribute to homelessness? The fuck do you mean? Lamo, yeah, I'm sure Russian oligarchs are the reason housing isn't affordable. No, all oligarchs are the reason why housing isn't affordable. All capitalists are the reason why housing isn't affordable. They buy housing as a commodity as an investment vehicle what the fuck yes dude yeah yeah exactly not just like russian ones he's like hey man listen i'll only criticize capitalism if we do it from a point of view of ethnic background or race or creed okay i'm not doing it for any other reason How are oligarchs any different than a top 100 CEO? They're not, you fucking weirdo. That's the whole point. What do you mean? What? That's what I've... Did you hear me being sarcastic? I think I was being serious. What the fuck? That was my point. What is going on? What's happening right now in the chat, dude? All billionaires are oligarchs. America is also an oligarchy. Hello? What is going on? There's no difference functionally between a Russian oligarch and an American one, okay? People make it seem like uh, the, the Russian oligarch controls uh, large swaths of the Russian economy, whereas, like, the American one doesn't. No, the American one does, too. What the fuck? Wealth. The oligarchs also use Swiss bank accounts to hide their money, up to $150 billion worth, according to an estimate from a leading Swiss paper produced this week. At the end of the 1990s, after Russian oligarchy had taken hold, a strong man emerged, Vladimir Putin. Putin came to power with the support of Russia's oligarchs. Putin yeah, but lack of housing seems like the main problem to me. Is it not enough housing to go around? First and foremost, even if you think, even if you're like a straight fucking yimby, and you think it's the lack of housing, who is controlling the supply of housing? You think it's the big bad government? Or do you think it's the big bad government working at the behest of other realtors and developers who want to maintain a certain price on housing to make sure that it continues going up? Okay? God damn, dude. Fucking people that have socked them uh, Twitter descriptions stop sounding like fucking libertarians challenge. Impossible difficulty. Putin himself has amassed vast wealth and by some measures is the wealthiest man in the world. Putin has reportedly spent 1 billion to build himself a 123,785 square foot palace, which is nearly double the size of Buckingham Palace. Once in office, Putin crushed Russia's independent-minded oligarchs. Then, with the support of those that remained, he gradually moved Russia from a failing democracy with freedom of speech to a dictatorship governed with fear and violence. Once, Putin worked for the oligarchy. Now, the oligarchy works for Putin. This is also true. Uh, by the way, any time... Mike. Any time they fucking... Anytime they cover, like, what Russia is doing or what Putin is doing in Russia and all that shit, like, it's fucking hilarious that it is just, like, you can make a one-to-one -one comparison to the United States of America. Straight up. So after decades of fueling Russian oligarchs' wealth, why are we suddenly going after them? Why now? Well, Western leaders believe that putting pressure on Russian oligarchs could force them to pressure Putin to withdraw from his invasion of Ukraine. But many analysts, myself included, believe that Russian oligarchs... Wait. Hold up. The person who said, even if you build a skyscraper for every citizen, it won't be enough to if you price it so they can't afford it. That's true. Rot, let's go. Um, that's literally not true. In most cities, vacant housing units outnumber homeless people by around three to one. Uh, I agree. 
Certainly. I, I understand and, and agree with your point. Yes. It's also vacant houses that people sit on because, again, it is considered an investment vehicle and it's cheaper to just sit on vacant homes and Airbnb it out or potentially rent it out rather than actually fucking uh, sell it, okay? Or, or even rent it out, as a matter of fact. Because ultimately, you know, you can just cash out on that investment years down the line because it's an asset that's constantly appreciating. Why is it constantly appreciating? Through a series of financially interested parties getting together and ensuring that it constantly appreciates as a con uh, by doing things like limiting the supply of housing too, okay? Supply of affordable housing especially. Only allowing expensive new housing to be built. Luxury condominiums and, and, and the like. Uh, ensuring that hotels, for example, don't do like project room key uh, type things uh, to, to combat homelessness. All of it still comes back to the same concept, which is that housing should not be seen as a commodity. Okay? now almost all work for Putin. If we want to end Putin's invasion of Ukraine, we need to get rid of the oil and gas payments he depends upon to fund his military machine. Still, the fact remains that defeating the Russian oligarchy is crucial for our national security because it will remove Russian billionaires' influence from our own politics in America and Europe. Putin and his oligarch allies but there's no one the American oligarchs work for, right? Like how Russia's worked for Putin. The American oligarchs just work for themselves. They work for capitalism uh, and, and the sanctity and maintenance and continuation of capitalism, a system that has rewarded them so greatly that their great, 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 great grandchildren no longer have to work, okay, if they don't want to. It's class solidarity demonstrated every single day in front of your eyes, except the only class solidarity that is acceptable is billionaires and millionaires and capital owners and even small business owners as well. A false sense of class solidarity with bourgeois capital owners can also be seen in even workers that have a 401k. Okay. Let me rephrase. Russian oligarchs do not materially contribute to unaffordable housing. Inflation and policy set by HUD, FHA, and FHFA contribute to unaffordable housing. I say this is an employee of one of those organizations. I mean, you're, I think you're missing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's the top of the fucking hour. And as an oligarch of the American variety, I'm going to serve you a 60-second ad. Because I have class solidarity with the main oligarch, Jeffrey Bezos. And a contractual obligation, Jeff Bezos dictates I serve you a 60-second ad break at top of every hour. But you can avoid those ads if you subscribe for $5 or for free. With a Twitch Prime, that is. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Here's the one minute ad break now. Also, also, are you saying you're a Twitch oligarch? Yes. I'm just an oligarch, baby. The most disgusting ad break you've ever done. <laughs> okay, so. Moggy's 10 months in an old head now. The American government does not work for the interests of the citizens. The American government is set up and continues to work for the interests of capital owners. So when the American government does something, it's not necessarily the fault of like this individual entity called the American government operating at their own on their own volition, accountable by democracy. That's just theory. 
okay? That's just a theory. That's just a, a false notion that helps us sleep at night. Make us feel like we actually have a say in this process. When the American government does something, it is done with the express purpose of benefiting capital owners and their material interests, okay? They are the ones who built this government specifically for this purpose. That's it. ...have been funding a network of right-wing parties and movements that incite racism, oppose democracy, and spread climate change denial. They leverage cultural power by sponsoring iconic American institutions like the Metropolitan Opera and Carnegie Hall to legitimize Putin's... Mark Fisher, the actual ruling class, propagates ideologies of individualism while tending to the act as a class. The dupe servants of the ruling class does the opposite. Lip service to solidarity and collectivity while always acting as if the individualist categories imposed by power really hold regime and they have teams of lobbyists and lawyers to influence our lawmakers removing their corrupting influence from our politics helps make decisions about russia and oligarchy thank you give me tacos with a 10 gift subs in our own best interests and crucially closing down loopholes in the shadow financial system could be used to expose corrupt elites not just the russian ones so how do we do it First off, we can create a global wealth registry to track oligarchs' assets <laughs> across the world. This would Yeah, right. Imagine. I'm willing to bet that, uh, you know, those who hold the levers of power would not necessarily be very comfortable with such a concept. You know, having all of their assets in some kind of registry. Would include an automatic exchange of financial information on extremely wealthy individuals. Instead of competing against each other to attract the wealth of oligarchs with increasingly flimsy rules, countries like the US, UK and the Europe. It's really funny because like there's well-intentioned social democrats. Okay, that, that, you know, propose these kind of solutions but don't actually want to do what it takes to build an enforcement mechanism and can't even fucking comprehend how that would work. You know what I mean? It's just... It's just not going to happen. And I, I think this is, this is some pickety. The enforcement mechanism will be expensive? No. No, 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 no. You're missing the point. I'm not even talking about the enforcement mechanism. I'm talking about even creating or completely uprooting the system in an effort to have some kind of enforcement. Like, you're missing the forest for the trees here. What I'm simply stating is, without any kind of worker power, labor militancy that accompanies any sort of movement like this, all you're going to have is ideas have like the ones put forward by well-intentioned social democrats like Piketty about a wealth registry and a potential wealth tax at the global level when these individual countries operate specifically at the behest of said oligarchs. They work, they work in a way where... The, the government's work in favor of those very same people that we're supposed to be doing a, a wealth registry on. Never going to happen. The European Union could work together to make sure the wealthy pay their fair share. Second, we can close financial loopholes, which are frequently used by oligarchs to hide their wealth. Instead of allowing the ultra-rich to use shell companies and opaque ownership structures, we could require beneficial ownership requirements for all forms of assets and ones that really work. Essentially, that would require all companies, trusts and foundations to publicly disclose who benefits from them. Finally, we can increase funding and support for enforcing the laws we already have on the books. Bobbies. The US can put anti-corruption and money laundering measures at the top of the international agenda 
and we can provide many more resources to the domestic and international regulatory agencies whose job it is to track oligarchs' wealth and enforce when they break the law. Has. Today, Russia's billionaires control roughly 30% of the nation's wealth. For comparison, German and American billionaires control about 15% of the wealth in their respective countries. Research suggests Russian oligarchs have about as much wealth stashed in offshore foreign accounts as the entire Russian population has in Russia itself. Defeating the Kremlin's oligarchy would be a huge turning point for both national security and financial transparency. So if our leaders truly are serious about tackling Putin's oligarchy, then we have to start looking at our own role in creating these loopholes and close them down once and for all. China may have shit MREs, but I don't see Jack Ma talking about his insane 996 shit anymore. The China model of handling oligarchs is better. I don't think China enforced, you know... I don't think China kidnapped Jack Ma in, in the lightest terms I can uh, use to, to, because he was talking about six, uh, the, his 996 11 months of hussy scotton plan program whatever emax seething right now elon was rumored to be dating only star puppy girl jenna i don't believe this this is not real <laughs>